Good evening, everyone. Uh, present here, uh, I'm Ruchita Rathi, uh, and uh, today's my, my topic of presentation is examination and determination of carcinogenic elements present in textile fabrics dyed and printed both. Uh, let's start with the overview of the topic. Uh, like the since uh, the dawn of the civilization, fabric has remained one of the basic need for for the human beings. And uh, as uh, as development of the uh, industries, the quality and requirement of fabric has been changed for enhancing uh, fabric qualities like a like, um, whiteness, color fastness, as uh, anti um, anti shrinkle properties, crease resistance, or uh, other properties, various types of dyes and chemicals uh, are used. During this process, some of the carcinogenic elements which are present for, um, in the dyes and the chemicals get transferred to the fabrics and side-by-side uh, um, -side, uh, passes to our skin and, and body. Some of the elements are allergic, asthmatic, or uh, they are discharged into soil. It'll, uh, uh, and, and their discharge into soil and environment is, is uh, hazardous for us. And also it has been proved that chemical like DDT can also accumulate in mother's milk. So different, um, uh, so uh, after viewing this alarming situation, different eco label across the globes have come for controlling the amount of carcinogens uh, products. Uh, these labels are Ocotex 100, Reach, Gods, Ecosit, Ecomark, and uh, many more are there. Now, uh, what are the carcinogenic substances? Carcinogenic substances basically are those, those uh, which are, are uh, uh, like uh, hazardous for uh, us, us uh, for environment and for the human beings uh, also. So these elements are uh, present in the fabric, produce harmful effects. Like, so if they are uh, used, used uh, below, beyond the uh, permissible range. So oh, be, uh, be, beyond the permissible range, it becomes, uh, they become hazardous for health and as well as for the mm -hmm. environment. And now the question is how they get uh, transformed to, uh, to the uh, fabrics. So uh, fab there is a whole uh, fabric manufacturing process. Uh, so since we uh, start from raw material to getting fabric, there is a whole process like uh, uh, raw material is undergoes to spinning, then sizing, weaving, desizing, and then moisturizing, dyeing, printing, and uh, various kinds of finishing processes. Yes, and then we get the attractive fabric. Now the, in, the, in all these processes is a um, uh, very uh, like a, uh, carcinogenic elements get transferred. These elements are like heavy metals, amines, formaldehydes, phthalates, it's, uh, and uh, some um, chlorides are there. Uh, so these are very harmful. Only like in sizing process, heavy metals are uh, heavy metals get deposited on the uh, fabric. In uh, printing and dyeing, the amines which are absolutely banned and uh, get deposited in the fab on the fabric. So this is uh, uh, this is uh, like uh, compulsory to who control these uh, types of elements. Uh, these are the uh, kind of elements uh, like uh, formaldehyde. It is used as anti shrinking agent, but simultaneously it induced ca cancer effects or cancer inducing effects uh, uh, is because of is it it uh, like am amines pesticides phthalates it's uh, phthalates are endocrine endocrine disruptive effects X pesticides are um, uh, harmful for lungs kidney it get deposited into into the git e system of the human body e and uh, produce harmful effects it now, what is the aim and scope of my study? Uh, uh, because of um, uh, at present green consumerism, that is, is uh, uh, eco-friendly fabrics, it's are in trend. And uh, uh, so that why uh, this study is uh, become more important. And secondly, the strict quality controls are advocating for the eco-friendly fabrics, not in India, but outside the uh, uh, India or uh, in global market, major European and US textile buyers are followed that rules. Also, that's why it, uh, it is important or it is compulsory to like uh, control these types of elements and uh, in fabrics. Then lack of rigid laws and the quality control uh, 
quality control all systems reference to this field especially for the garments for the uh, which are uh, like sale which are for sale in indian local market okay so, so aim of this study to create awareness about the dangers and harmful effects of the carcinogens uh, now uh, as for this study i have collected samples mm -hmm. also uh, from uh, local markets and processing house of, houses of Ahmedabad, Gujarat and Pali, Rajasthan also. And also oh, I have collected some fabrics of specific brands. And, and uh, my present focus is uh, done for the determination of formaldehyde, heavy metals and amines. These are my fabric samples that I collected. Some are printed, some are plain, and some are light or some are dark colors are there. Now, firstly, analysis of formaldehyde. Now, formaldehyde uh, for this TN mesh method is uh, has used, uh, which is very prescribed method. Uh, and uh, basically, in textile industries, they all followed this method. And uh, um, formaldehyde, uh, if, uh, it is present in um, dyes used uh, as glazing agent for anti also. It is used for anti creasing agents to improve color fastness of the fabrics. So, uh, this formaldehyde get deposited in the fabric. Uh, so uh, basic principle is to uh, uh, analysis for this. You know, firstly, simply formaldehyde is uh, extracted from this uh, sample uh, and then an uh, amount or concentration of the formaldehyde in the sample or the fabric determined by a uh, spectrophotometrically. Uh, firstly, uh, when we take out the filtrate of formaldehyde samples, uh, samples uh, it is react add by adding Nash reagent, it is reacted with either this and uh, produce yellow color. If yellow color is there, uh, indicates the formaldehyde is present in the fabric sample. And then it is measured on on uh, the UV visible at uh, 412 nanometer. These are the, uh, these are few more results uh, like um, in sample one, two, three, and four uh, absorbance shows and, and the amount of uh, the uh, formaldehyde present in the fabric is, is 374.77 kg, uh, 198.44 and it is very high. It is very high because according to uh, Opotex uh, 100, uh, 100 it, uh, the eco standard, uh, it only permi permissible range is only 20 to 75 ppm. Uh, each and every group, but it is very uh, high in the concentration as as uh, showing in the observations. Now the determination of heavy metals. For this is uh, heavy metals also. It is also prescribed method is here. Uh, firstly, the heavy metals also are uh, used for manufacturing of dyes and dyes intermediates, and uh, because and if, uh, these are uh, get deposited from the dyes or in the process of dyeing in of the fabric. Uh, what now? What is the principle? Firstly, uh, extraction of the heavy metal uh, from the fabric done by perspiration method or perspiration solution after uh, subject to acidization and absorbance is noted on noted by the AAS as that is atomic absorption spectrometry. Uh, now these are the uh, samples like. It, these are the permissible range like a baby baby clothing and general clothing. If uh, like a uh, cadmium and lead should not be present at any cost in baby clothing, but still, well, uh, it is found. These are, these both are found frequently, and uh, like we can see, either uh, very they are found in very very high a quantity after comparing the permissible range. So it is not good. Now the third one is amines. The determination of amines by the prescribed ICS method. And in this um, principle, is the for this method is the amines released in the process 
of reductive cleavage are transferred to diethyl ether phase by liquid liquid extraction and the residue is dissolved in methanol all of further detection of amine is done by the means of hptlc these are the hptlc working conditions are here or uh, after or uh, developing the uh, hptlc uh, uh, hptlc post chromatic uh, chromatographic derivatization is done by the solution and observations are there or uh, permissible range amines should not be present in any concentration at any cost in any kind of fabric not for baby clothing not for general uh, not for adult or any general clothing but after observation or after my analysis i see the, all the amines are present in little bit traces or in uh, some are present in high amount now uh, come to the forensic significance as fabric is the basic need of human being but presence of these carcinogens above permissible range made the fabric harmful for public and the health environment so strictly quality controls should be advocated for the prevention of their use in textiles and um, uh, for this is the use of formaldehyde resins pcp dye uh, stuff containing uh, heavy metals auxiliaries containing amines uh, phthalates uh, as prohibited by the ministry of uh, ministry of environment as per notification published in gadget 1990 but uh, uh, this uh, that is not followed rigidly in india uh, uh, so that uh, textile manufacturers uh, so should pay attention towards the norms and uh, norms referred by the various eco standards uh, which results in loss of income and uh, credibility of our country in global market lastly i want to say like one can avoid tea coffee or soft drinks but no one can avoid the clothing hence strict quality control and more rigid laws are are um, necessary to prohibit it uh, the use of such uh, carcinogenic elements in fabric manufacturing process as uh, to uh, and for achieving the healthy and uh, healthy health healthy e public health and in the um, uh, pollution free environment in our country and also uh, um, our reputation in reputation in export market to on valuable foreign currency thank you